Injuries suck. They're part of every sport and they're never going away. But it's okay to embellish in the fact that when your player gets injured, it's one of the worst feelings you can have as a fan, regardless of the sport you're watching. Specifically in baseball, injuries have claimed the careers of many potential Hall of Fame players. Justin Morneau is one of the oft-forgotten MVP winners of the 2000s, but wrist injuries, a neck surgery, and constant concussion problems derailed his Hall of Fame path. Brandon Webb started 197 games in six seasons and won a Cy Young, but because of constant injuries to his rotator cuff, his MLB career was cut short. Jacoby Ellsbury was a dynamite, five-tool player who came in second in MVP voting in 2011, only to have his soul consumed from his body in exchange for millions of dollars. Okay, that's not exactly how it happened, but the effects certainly still linger today. And Ellsbury's career is pretty similar to someone we're going to be talking about today. Also, hi. I don't think I've properly introduced myself. You've probably noticed already, but you haven't heard my voice before on this channel. You can call me Jolly Olive, and I'm the newest member of the Stark Raving Sports team. If you like today's video, I do a ton of similar content on my own YouTube channel, which you can find in the description below. Hopefully you find my commentary as, uh, soothing as the other lads on the channel. But let's get back to it, shall we? If you can read, and I sure hope you can, you know that today's video is about Grady Sizemore. Sizemore was great in his own time during the mid-2000s, but why are we talking about him today? Well, the thing is, on Stark Raving Sports, I'm gonna be talking a lot about players like Grady Sizemore. Players that had insane peaks and insane talent. As some of you probably know, Sizemore got bit hard by the injury bug in his career. But I don't want today's video to just be a retrospective on what could have been. Instead, I wanna properly illustrate just how insane saying Grady Sizemore was when he was at his peak. But to do that, I'll need a little bit of help from this guy. Trust me, I'll explain. Just stick with me. This man's name is Bill James, and he came up with some of the baseball saber metrics that we now use every day to evaluate players. He's responsible for runs created stats, range factor stats, but most importantly for today's video, the similarity score. Originally created for active players to be compared to Hall of Fame players to see who was on the path to make it to Cooperstown. And me and my new buddies at SRS discovered that Grady Sizemore might have had the craziest similarity scores of any player during his peak. So let's break it all down. But really quick first, here's the best heckle I've ever heard. Looking at the head of the as of today, Grady Sizemore is the same age as Robinson Cano. He was drafted out of high school the same year as Yadier Molina and was part of the same rookie class as Zach Greinke. So had he held up physically, he might still be playing in the major leagues today. Let's take a few steps back in the story to understand why this is significant. Sizemore was a high school athlete in football, basketball, and baseball. And he was actually going to be a quarterback while playing baseball at the University of Washington. However, the Montreal Expos lured him away in the third round of the draft and gave him a large enough signing bonus to instantly go pro out of high school. He actually got traded to Cleveland along with Cliff Lee and Brandon Phillips in a crazy deal where the Expos got, you guessed it, Bartolo Colon in return. Let's go. Anyway, this turned out to be a great trade for Cleveland, aside from Cliff Lee and Brandon Phillips, because Grady Sizemore played nearly every game from 2005 to 2008, and he achieved a lot of stuff along the way. In his first full season in 2005, Grady Sizemore would put up an OPS plus of 123, meaning he was 23% better than the average hitter that year. He also stole 22 bases and hit 22 home runs. I appreciate the consistency there. Add in 37 doubles, and in his first full season, Grady Sizemore got MVP votes in the American League. As a 22-year-old, he became one of two players in Cleveland's franchise history to hit 20 doubles, 10 triples, 20 home runs, and steal 20 bases all in the same season. And his play would only improve from here on in. In 2006, he improved his OPS Plus by 10 points, making him 33% better than the average hitter, and hit 16 more doubles than the year before. He recorded his highest on-base plus slugging percentage in his career at 907, and played in all 162 games for the Indians that year. He made his first all-star team and nearly cracked the top 10 in American League MVP voting. He became the second player in MLB history to have at least 50 doubles, 10 triples, 25 home runs, and 20 stolen bases in a single season. The first guy to do it since 1932. Oh yeah, he'd also take home his first gold glove in 2007 and add another one the next season. When I say that Grady Sizemore was a true five-tool player, I'm not kidding. And that phrase gets thrown around a lot these days. The fact is that Grady Sizemore was one of the best players in 
in baseball from 2006 to 2008. He was the second fastest in Major League Baseball, accumulated the third highest war, had the fifth most doubles, and ranked in the top 20 for triples, stolen bases, and hard hit percentage. Not to mention 27th in weighted runs created plus another Bill James statistic. Of the nine players who stole more bases than Sizemore in 2008, none of them hit more than 16 home runs. But Grady hit 33. In 2007, he was one of six batters in the American League to have 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases. In his company was Alex Rodriguez, Gary Sheffield, Ian Kinsler, BJ Upton, and Curtis Granderson. Grady Sizemore found himself on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 2008, and much deserved, with a quote below him from then Indians general manager Mark Shapiro saying, he is without a doubt one of the greatest players of our generation. So yeah, expectations for a Hall of Fame career were reasonably high for Grady Sizemore. From 2005 to 2008, he slashed a 372 on on-base percentage, a 496 slugging percentage, 115 steals, a silver slugger, and two gold gloves. Put it all together, and Albert Pujols, Chase Utley, and Al Alex Rodriguez were the only hitters to accrue more wins above replacement during that time. All right, before I get even further down the rabbit hole of crazy things that Grady Sizemore did, we brought up Bill James and similarity scores before for a reason, because Grady Sizemore's similarity scores are insane. <laughs> Eyes do not deceive you. Grady Sizemore, as a 24-year-old, was most similar to Mookie Betts. When Mookie Betts was 24, it was a year before he won his first World Series. He hit 24 home runs, got 102 RBIs, stole 26 bases, hit 46 doubles, and had an OPS plus of 108. He was an all-star, a gold glover, and a top five MVP vote finalist. Oh yeah, you may have seen another pretty good name there. That would be Barry Bonds. Now, Barry Bonds, at age 25 and 26, wasn't eating a healthy balanced breakfast yet yet, but he was still mashing baseballs and stealing tons of bases. In that two-year window, Bonds would hit 58 home runs, steal 95 bases, collect 230 RBIs, and put up an OPS plus of 165. Let's take an in-depth look at how Sizemore compares to both Betts and Bonds at their respective points in his career. Here are the career totals and splits for Grady Sizemore and Mookie Betts at their age 24 season. Sizemore played in more games, got on base at a higher clip, but had the same slugging percentage as Mookie. Mookie had a higher batting average, more stolen bases, but the same amount of home runs as Grady. The only edge here is that Grady had five points higher on his OPS plus, but the margin is certainly slight. We'll push things forward a year to get his comparison to Barry Bonds. Grady Sizemore had more plate appearances, a higher average, a higher on base percentage, and a higher slugging than Barry Bonds, but Bonds' OPS plus was better compared to the league at the time, and he clubbed more home runs and stole over 50 more bags compared to Grady Sizemore. Sometimes I forget how many bags Barry Bonds used to steal on a regular basis. He was a fast dude. So thanks to the work of Bill James, we can now tell that Grady Sizemore was on a similar career path to two of the greatest players MLB has ever seen. Whether or not this is a good or a bad thing depends on how you look at his career. For a four-year stretch, you could have argued that Grady Sizemore was the best player in baseball, but his drop-off was just as quick as his rise to stardom. Putting together this graphic really gave me a lot of pain, but it just really goes to show how different things were after the 2008 season for Grady Sizemore. His batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging all fell off a cliff, his OPS plus dipped below 100, and he wasn't hitting home runs or stealing bases at nearly the same clip. It was just a cruel concoction of injuries. First surgery for his left elbow, then surgery for his left knee, then back surgery, another knee surgery, this time to his right knee. And before anyone really realized, it was 2015 and Sizemore's career was over. I said at the beginning of the video that I didn't want this video to be about Sizemore's injuries and what could have been. Instead, what I want you to take away is that Sizemore was among the elite in terms of what he was doing from 2005 to 2009. And though we never got to see the complete piece come to fruition, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't appreciate what Sizemore accomplished in that time frame. He was one of the faces of MLB, and it may be forgotten nowadays, but I'm hoping that this video makes you reflect on it a little bit more. Even if you never heard of Sizemore before, maybe this video was a little bit informative to you. Guys like Mookie Betts and Barry Bonds don't come around very often in MLB, and even when they don't finish their career, they deserve to be remembered. So I'm hoping that this video can help immortalize Grady Sizemore in some regard. Anyways, I don't have much more for you guys today. If you enjoyed today's video, maybe consider checking out my channel. Again, you can find the link in the description. I'll be making videos for Star Graving Sports once a month from here on in, so I hope you enjoy what I bring to the table. Anyways, that's all for this video. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time. Has anybody told you